Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is Loki Season 1. Travel back in time to the first Avengers, where Loki tried to conquer Earth but was stopped. But in Avengers Endgame, during the time heist to steal the Infinity Stones because Hulk took the stairs, oh, the Tesseract ended up right in Loki's hands. So now on the other side of the world, Loki immediately resumed his plans for world domination. But then something very unexpected happens. These futuristic looking people coming through a portal and they are not messing around. Boom, oh, slow motion time stick. They're from the Time Variance Authority, the TVA who monitors the timeline. And their vibe here is a hilariously boring bureaucracy which runs on ridiculous retro tech. We get the rundown from Miss Minutes in a Jurassic Park style cartoon. There used to be a chaotic mess of a multiverse, but the timekeepers organized it into one sacred timeline. And so now if anyone steps off their chosen path, they are a variant and the TVA steps in to prune them. And by prune, I mean disintegrate. Loki's like, look, you got the wrong guy. It's the Avengers who are off time traveling, but turns out their time travel is part of the sacred timeline. Loki escaping though was not. But Loki is saved by Agent Mobius, Owen Wilson, who thinks Loki can actually help him out. At first, of course, Loki tries to escape, but when he finds out the Tesseract doesn't work here, in fact, they got a whole drawer full of junk Infinity Stones, Loki realizes this TVA is the ultimate power in the universe. So Mobius shows Loki the recap of how the rest of his life was supposed to go, how he eventually becomes mostly a good guy, but just then is killed by Thanos. So now having sped through his redemption arc, he's like, all right, how can I help? There's a dangerous variant out there hunting down TVA agents, and turns out it is another version of Loki. And so our Loki suits up to help the TVA hunt down evil Loki. Agent Mobius is a funny jaded bureaucrat kind of guy who loves jet skis even though he has no life outside of work. He and Mobius have a fun antagonistic relationship where Mobius knows he can't trust him, but despite that, they start to bond and do become kind of friends. Pretty soon, Loki figures out that if you go to an apocalyptic event, you can mess with the timeline all you want. It won't register any variance because nothing matters, everyone's wiped out anyway. So they track evil Loki too, a mega hurricane in the near future Earth. Turns out this Loki has enchantment powers to get inside people's heads. And there's another big difference. Turns out she is a girl Loki, whoa! And right now her master plans come into fruition as she sets off Nexus events all over the timeline. And with the TVA forces all spread out, she's able to waltz right in and make her way to the Timekeepers. Our Loki's like, hey, we should work together. My secret plan was to overthrow the Timekeepers too. But she has no interest in a partner and right then anyway, they're cornered. So Loki's gotta, oh, teleport them out of there. Turns out they landed in one of the worst apocalypses as the entire moon's coming to destroy the planet. And with their temp out of battery, these two have to work together to figure out a way to survive. These two start to bond, swapping stories of their alternate lives. She goes by Sylvie, by the way. There's fun shenanigans when Loki gets drunk and gets thrown off the train. But pretty soon they're out of time. They've got to fight their way to the evacuation ship, which does not evacuate. In the face of certain death, Sylvie tells the story of how she was just a little girl when the TVA came and ripped her out of her life. She managed to escape, but spent her whole life on the run. It's a sad story, and Loki's like, hey girl, I don't think you're a mistake. I think you're super hot. And so as the world's about to end, these two have developed kind of a crush on each other. Somehow this causes a huge nexus spike, and the TVA is able to get there and rescue them. Unfortunately, though, they're rescued right back into custody. Loki's sent to a memory loop prison where Lady Sif makes a cameo and repeatedly kicks him in the nuts. But when Mobius interrogates him, Loki drops the epic truth bomb Sylvie told him. Turns out all the TVA agents are variants themselves who have had their minds wiped They used to have real lives. So Mobius goes to see his boss, Judge Renslayer, and these two are good friends from working together for an eternity. But now Mobius swaps their phones, finds out that Loki's telling the truth. It's like, hey man, we gotta tell everyone. But Renslayer's already onto him and no mercy for her old friend, she prunes Mobius. And now it's time for Loki and Sylvie to be pruned too and the timekeepers themselves want to watch. But just then Hunter B-15 busts in and sets him free. Yes, yeah, Sylvie told her the truth too. So it's a big old fight scene that ends with Sylvie, oh, she did it, killed the timekeepers. But what's this? They're not real, they were just robots. Yes, someone was wizard of ozing them, but then who's the man behind the curtain? But before they could figure it out, Loki is pruned, no! But turns out he's not disintegrated, he was teleported to a strange place, surrounded by other variants of himself, one of whom is an alligator. How did that one even happen? They call this place the Void, and there's a giant cloud monster here, Eliath, who eats everything. These Lokis have survived by running and hiding, and they've all basically given up. But Lokis are good at surviving. There's a whole bunch of them here. And in classic Loki fashion, they are all constantly betraying each other. Oh, so embarrassing. Meanwhile, Sylvie found out that Loki isn't dead, so she pulls a bold move and prunes herself. She wakes up in the void, reunites with Mobius, then tracks down our Loki. She has a plan to get past Eliath. She thinks she can enchant it. So Loki and Sylvie share another tender moment. He's like, look, I realize I used to betray everyone I ever cared about, but I don't want to be that guy anymore. Then he shares a tender moment with Mobius, who he's become true friends with. And as he goes back to deal with the TVA, Loki and Sylvie are going to fight a cloud. Sylvie starts enchanting while Loki pulls the Jurassic Park flare distraction, but the much better distraction comes from old Loki, who summons an entire illusory Asgard. In the end, he sacrifices himself, but bought just enough time. Oh, they've enchanted this thing. So now our heroes get to find out who's really behind the TVA, living in the spooky castle at the end of time. And turns out the most powerful being in the universe is just some guy. He doesn't give a name except for he who remains, but all comic readers know who he is. He explains he was a scientist from future Earth who discovered the multiverse and traveled around, you know, making friends with himself. But some versions of himself 
itself weren't so friendly, they wanted to conquer the multiverse, and it started an epic multiversal war that almost wiped out everything. Apparently, this guy was able to end it, and he created the TVA to keep the multiverse one nice, neat, sacred timeline. And so, yes, the TVA is bad because it takes away all free will, but it's better than a giant multiversal war, or if it was ruled by an evil version of himself. He's been here now, though, for an eternity. He's ready to retire, and he wants Loki and Sylvie to take his place. It's like, yeah, you guys can run the TVA however you want, just don't let other evil versions of me exist. This is quite a lot to take in, but Sylvie's of the mind they should still just kill this fool, while Loki's like, hey, we need to talk it out. Sylvie likes talking things out with her swords, though. They have a Loki fight. But in the end, Loki's like, hey, girl, I don't want to fight you. In fact, I love you. And oh, these two start smooching. All right. But Sylvie's like, hey, boo, I still gotta do this. Pushes him back to the TVA. And her entire life's goal, she finally does it. She kills the guy behind the TVA. He's not too concerned, though, and has some pretty disconcerting final words. See you soon. And Sylvie kind of realizes maybe he wasn't lying and I've made a huge mistake. And now with no one controlling the timeline, it starts splintering off in all directions. It's multiverse time, baby. Back at the TVA, Loki tracks down Mobius and fills him in on the situation, but Mobius doesn't recognize him. Time travel is weird, but somehow this TVA is already under the control of a different version of that guy. What effect will our newly emerging multiverse have on the wider Marvel Cinematic Universe? Things are about to get crazy. And that's how Loki season one comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies. And if you loved this recap, check out the join button and support the channel as a member.